Hello everyone, this is Caleb Simpson here from ZeldaDungeon.net, and you are watching our video boss guide for The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is the boss chamber of the seventh dungeon of the game, The City in the Sky. As you enter the area, you want to immediately use the claw shot to latch onto the nearby pillar, and then use the other claw shot to grapple onto the vines on the opposing pillar. You want to climb up to the top of this giant grassy platform, and after some sweet camera angles and some very lengthy introduction, we'll face off with the boss of this dungeon, the Twilight Dragon, Argarok. As the battle begins, you want to wait near the center of this area, the arena, and simply keep an eye on Argarok. It takes a while for it to fly around the arena, so it shouldn't be too difficult to track it down, so it takes a very long time. Now, if it stays pretty low to the ground as it's coming at you, it is trying, as it is doing right now, it will try and shred you with its talons as it passes. You need to roll out of the way and then quickly put on the iron boots to avoid getting pulled off the ledge by the gusts of wind that this causes as well. You want to take off the iron boots and watch Argarok again. Now if it flies to the middle of the area, as it is doing here, it will flap its wings and attempt to blow you off the ledge. You want to put on the iron boots to avoid this, and you'll actually notice that this is a great opportunity for you to deal damage to it. Notice that its tail will light up with an arrow so you can see target it. Do so, and then use your claw shot. And while wearing the iron boots, this will weigh Argarok down, causing it to smash into the platform and breaking off some of its armor. So watch out for it when it's getting up as well though, since it can still blow you off the ledge, so keep your iron boots on. So here it's trying to do that swooping attack again, so just like the last time, you want to roll out of the way and quickly put on the iron boots. The third type of attack that Argarok will perform is to perch atop one of the four pillars that are in the arena. If you wait too long, it will blow fire at you which will obviously do damage to you. <laughs> While it's charging this up though, you can use this time to your advantage and use the double claw shot to work your way up the pillars. So when you're high enough to Argarok itself, you can actually smack it in the head with your claw shot to make it leave the pillar. This will allow you to get to the highest point if you like without getting smacked off. Now that we're at a decent height, you can Z-target its tail once again and use the iron boots. You want to do this quickly before it starts blowing fire at you again. This will smash it into the floor once more, breaking off even more of its armor. This will reveal a glowing spot on its back, making it one of the few bosses in Twilight Princess not to have an eye for a weak spot. After a moment, it will get up and roar, breaking off the remaining pieces of armor and initiating the second phase of the battle. Since it's supposed to be all dramatic, there's thunder and lightning, as well as rain at this point, so I suppose that's why the pea hats begin to grow and take flight. They just love the rain, I guess. It's a good thing, too, since we will need them in order to defeat the boss. They're also kind enough to form a complete circle that's very symmetrical, as well as perfectly distance apart. So how kind of them. Once you regain control, you want to quickly begin scaling the pillars and going back and forth, and finally latching onto the highest point you can. Once you're at the very top, you'll be able to climb up and latch onto the closest pea hat. At this point, Argarok will move into the center, kind of a dumb idea right there, and after a moment, it will blow fire at you. The trick to beating this part is to face towards the next pea hat, 
And so you turn while well, just sitting there, and then you Z-target the next pad that is next to you to continually use the double claw shot. This will allow you to stay ahead of the flames as Argorak will slowly rotate towards you. Eventually, it'll stop breathing fire and pause for a moment. Use this to your advantage and get behind it. Face towards it, Z-target the tender spot on his back and use the claw shot. Once you're on top of it, very similar to the battle with Morpheal in the Lake Bed Temple by the way, you'll be able to smack it repeatedly with your sword. After you've hurt it enough, it will fall to the ground and you'll get knocked off. Don't wait for Arkarok to get back up, instead you want to quickly run back to the pillars and start working your way back up. Now it's a little smarter this time around and it will start blowing fire at you while you climb, so you want to be quick and you should have no problem getting to the very top. So this is part of the reason why you want to get up as soon as possible when you knock it to the ground and start heading for the pillars. When Argorok is not blowing fire, it will constantly stare at you. Because it's just finished doing that, it will take a bit for it to charge back up. I'm waiting for it to start blowing fire again so that I'm not wasting time sitting around for no reason. I'm just wearing down my fingers, I guess. <laughs> Once it finally begins, you want to repeat this familiar process, and once you get to the back of it, you want to go ahead and claw shot and latch onto its back and slice away at its shiny orb just like you did before. When you land on the ground again, you want to quickly begin climbing the pillars to avoid Argorok's wrath. Oh no! Once again, I'm waiting for it to begin breathing fire, so just chilling out. Once it does start, you want to keep Z targeting and using the claw shot, but be ready to switch directions. Argorok is being tricky this time, and halfway through, it'll stop and switch sides. You want to quickly stop Z targeting, turn around, and hold Z again. You want to start going the other direction. We go this way like crazy, avoiding the flaming wall of death. Once it stops, once it stands still, you want to quickly get behind it, Z-target the weak point, and latch on. Smack it some more, and hopefully, you'll hurt it enough to do it in. So once you have damaged it sufficiently, Argorok will flail around and blow fire like crazy. Somehow Link magically got down to the ground, so it's not like he's gonna fall to his death when Argorok lands on him or something, I guess. <laughs> it really is kind of silly that Argorok himself just didn't, he's like stayed in the center the entire time for that second half of the battle. Didn't even dash at Link when he was on the piads or anything. I don't know, he just stayed right in the middle instead of going off to the side. Could have gone to outside the circle <laughs> too, but instead, I don't know. Once it finally runs out of oomph, it'll fall towards the platform, but explode in midair. That sure would be a lame way to go out. Once the heart container drops to the ground, it'll like bounce. It sounds a lot like it's glass or something. Dink, dink, dink. The sky will then clear up, and the black speckles will reform into the final shard of the Mirror of Twilight, which comes to rest in Link's hands. Minda will then appear, and as usual, and she will take it from you and exclaim that now we have all of them. Yay! After a moment, Minda asks you if you remember what the sages said before, about the Mirror of Twilight. She reminds you that they said that the, only the true ruler of the Twilight could destroy the Mirror of Twilight. I assume because it was built by their ancestors, so that ability is only passed down through blood or something? Or through the royal bloodline, anyway? So anyway, she goes on to explain that because Xant could only break the Mirror into shards, this proves that he is not the true ruler at all. This is a very interesting statement, and we will learn more about this in the next chapter. She will then make a portal which will appear, and will encourage you to head back to the mirror chamber. So once again, you will regain control, you want to go ahead and pick up the heart container, which will add an entire another heart to our total life. Yippee! That's all we had to do here, so when you're ready, go ahead and speak with Minda to leave. That concludes this video, and it also concludes this chapter. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you guys back at the entrance to the City in the Sky.